All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, I'm gonna to be trying to convince you that 2.5 gigabit for pretty much most deployments has a real chance of being better than 10 gigabit for a lot of different reasons for your networking setup. A lot of people really discount the fact that 2.5 gigabit is awesome, and it seems to be really overlooked. So in front of me here, I have three different adapters that are gonna kind of symbolize our three different options. So I've got a one gig adapter, a 2.5 gig adapter, and a 10 gig adapter. And all these, we're just gonna be talking about RJ45, copper ethernet, multi-speed ethernet. And we're mostly gonna be talking about in reference to using a NAS. So if you have a NAS locally on your network, if you do not have a NAS or anything else that requires fast speed locally, you probably are just gonna be using a gigabit connection anyway, because really not that many people have above a gigabit ethernet connection in today's age. And I don't think anybody, unless they're a massive business, has a 10 gig connection. And so really for this discussion, we're just gonna be talking about a local area network speeds for something like a NAS and everything like that. And really it comes down to price, simplicity, and overall experience, because 10 gigabit is tough. Okay, so first let's start off with a bit of history lesson. So on the upgrade path, one gigabit connections came out a very long time ago relative to everything else. One gigabit has been pretty much the standard for at least the past 15 years. Pretty much everything you would buy is just defaulted to a one gig connection, and that's not changed that much. Then came out 10 gigabit. So 10 gigabit was going to be the successor to one gigabit, but it kind of stalled out. 10 gigabit is very difficult to do over copper ethernet, and so you end up with these honkers just like this that are required to use it. You require a lot more expensive cabling, different cabling, and a lot more expensive components to actually run a 10 gig network. And because of that, until a few years ago, 10 gig was just outside of what pretty much any consumer would be able to reasonably afford. It has come down a lot, but it is still quite expensive. To solve this massive issue, two standards were born, the 2.5 and the 5 gig ethernet standards. And they have done an awesome job. And personally, in a lot of ways, I prefer them. So the 2.5 and 5 gig standards came actually well after the 10 gig standard was already published and really was designed to fix all the flaws of the 10 gig standard. And I think they did a very good job with it. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on 2.5 gig because that's kind of what's taken off more than five gig, but just know five gig is also out there. So first, let's just talk about price. Buying any 10 gig equipment is going to be very, very expensive. Ballpark about three to four times as expensive as equivalent 2.5 gig gear. There are some exceptions to that, but for the same piece, I'd be very surprised if you ever see it being less than 3x the price, just because it's a very expensive and it can be a lot more than that. So now let's also talk about ability to use your existing cabling. So 10 gig requires to be run either on a CAT6 for under 100 feet or a CAT6A for over 100 feet cable. That's the spec. You can get it to get on CAT5E, but it's unsupported and you might have weird issues. So use it your own beware. Don't go and just rip out your cabling before testing it probably, but use it your own risk if you are going to try to do 10 gig over CAT5E. The beauty of 2.5 gigabit is it can run CAT5E at the full length and so the majority of your cabling in the walls, if it's not very recent, is going to be Cat5e. That means you can run 2.5 gig networking without having to upgrade your cabling, which can be so expensive. All right, and so now let's kind of talk about one of the big flaws with 10 gig, and it's incredibly apparent with this right here. So this right here is a Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gig ethernet adapter. And so it allows me to plug 10 gig into my laptop and be able to have a 10 gig uplink to my network. So this kind of showcases the issue with 10 gig. 10 gig is a power suck. The only reason this is as large as it is, there's nothing in here that is this size other than the heat fins. This is only this big, so it can disperse enough heat so it doesn't overheat while it's running. 
The issue with 10 gig is the fact that it takes a ton of denoising to actually run. 10 gig over copper ethernet is a very noisy signal and therefore has to have actually pretty high processing within the actual device that's connecting to it. And so because of that, it takes a ton of power. And so you can see that here, it's just this massive heat enclosure, just really because one, it actually generates heat on the actual circuit die. And the other part of it that actually draws a ton of power is actually a step down circuit. So USB has a five volt power. That's why you don't have to plug this in separately is your computer gives it five volts of power but the actual ethernet connection, so the one and the zero going down the ethernet line is at 1.5 volts, I believe. It might be at 3.3, I'm trying to remember. But that means you have to have a voltage step down circuit proportional to how much current you're drawing. And so these things have to be really big, partially because those step down circuits actually are pretty inefficient. And so all this just makes for a very large enclosure that is very expensive and prone to overheating unless it's actively cooled. That is one of the big reasons why 10 gig switches tend to be very expensive. And the other thing is overall the power draw actually required on a switch. So if you look at any 10 gig switches, they are chonkers with active cooling. You can look right here, they all are gonna have active cooling on them unless they've got like two ports and those are even sometimes prone to overheating versus a little tiny unmanaged switch right here that is just so much smaller and easier. They are way cheaper and just so much more usable. We look at a 10 gig adapters as well. I mean, maybe it's pandemic pricing or anything. There's next to nothing on here that you can buy that's a 10 gig adapter. They're so complex that they actually are very subject to failing way more than these 2.5 gigabit ones are. So you just cannot find that many 10 gig adapters. Now, if we look at 2.5 gig adapters, boom, 22 bucks. I'll go ahead and leave affiliate links to all the stuff that I've got, but yeah, they're so much cheaper and so much lighter weight. I really enjoy it, especially for a laptop setup. Now let's also look at the port differences here. So a 10 gig adapter obviously has to have 10 gigs of networking but there's overhead on that. Then if we look at the USB-C spec, so USB 3. Point, oh, I have no idea because they keep renaming it, but primarily USB-C is maxing out at 10 gigabit. That means if you tried to plug a 10 gigabit internet dongle into a 10 gigabit USB port, there would be absolutely zero margin for error. And that's why all the 10 gig adapters actually require you to have a Thunderbolt port. It's a Thunderbolt 3 port, which is 40 gigabit. Therefore, it has enough overhead to actually allow you to run this at full speed. So that makes it so much more difficult. And so you cannot just plug it into any device. It has to be a Thunderbolt device, which is okay if you live in the Mac OS ecosystem. Pretty much every single Mac will have a Thunderbolt port at least. But if you're outside of that, it is a huge pain. Take this right here. Who does not have a USB port? You can get it in either USB-C or USB-A. Totally up to you. It makes it so much easier to use. And so now, obviously, there has to be a huge downside and it's very, very, very clear in the name. The biggest downside of 2.5 gigabit is it is one fourth the speed of 10 gigabit. But remember, that is one fourth the theoretical speed. So a 10 gig connection, at least on Mac OS, it is easier on Windows is hard to get. It is hard to saturate a 10 gigs connection to a NAS. Reasonably, I mean, when you're copying massive files, you can hit it as long as one, your NAS is fast enough and your computer is fast enough, but also two, your disks have to be fast enough. You probably need about seven disks in something like a RAID 5 array that are pretty fast to actually really get to be able to saturate a 10 gig connection. Normally what I tell people is a good 10 gig connection is anything over 800 megabytes per second. Whereas a 2.5 gigabit connection can get you a reasonable 250 megabytes per second with overhead, up to 300 if you get everything perfect, but you should be able to expect at least 250 megabytes per second, assuming your disks are fast enough. And so that really comes down to, is that enough for you? For pretty much any video editing that's not using like 
8K ProRes multicam, 2.5 gigabit is totally fine. And I use it all the time for this channel. I'm using multiple 4K streams of ProRes and easily able to still edit it with ultra snappy playback. I do have the 10 gig for massive file copies and it does speed it up for that. But for those cases, you really have to ask yourself, is it worth it? It is a huge step up from a one gig connection that maxes out at 125 megabytes per second. And so because of that, I really think that before you go straight to 10 gig, you should really look and see if 2.5 gig will serve your needs because for most people it probably will and it can save you a ton of money and headache. Now a couple of things. So as I said earlier, the 2.5 and 5 gig standards did come well after the 10 gig standard was created. And so because of that, not all devices have multi gig speed. So you can get a 10 gig switch that only works either at 10 or one gig. And so you need to watch out for that. Most modern switches now will have the option for multi-speed, but a lot of them that are older just will not. And so that's something to watch out for. Other than that, I really would look at 2.5 gig for your network because I do think it's got a lot of advantages. For most of the businesses I consult with, when you look at the price to performance ratios, as well as the overall cost, I would highly, highly recommend, and I do highly recommend, 2.5 gig setups for people who just need to transfer a lot of files sometimes, but don't need to go insane and spend a ton of money on a 10 gig setup just because it's overkill for them. So really, next time you're thinking about upgrading, really take a look at 2.5 gigabit because it is awesome, low power, and so much better. I use this all the time because I can just be sitting on the couch and plugging this in. There's no way you could do it with this. It's just a completely different ball game from power draw to cost to just ease of use. All right, well that's gonna be it for this tutorial overview, whatever this is. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, have a good one, bye.